At University of Virginia Health System, we're for sharing the latest health information from top minds to keep you and your family healthy. With UVA Health System Radio, here's Melanie Cole. Approximately 3,500 infants die annually in the United States from sleep-related deaths, including SIDS, ill-defined deaths, and accidental suffocation and strangulation. The American Academy of Pediatrics recently published new recommendations to reduce these risks. My guest today is Dr. Rachel Moon. She's an internationally recognized expert in SIDS and post-neonatal infant mortality and serves as the division head of pediatrics at the University of Virginia Health System. Welcome to the show, Dr. Moon. So let's start with these recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Is this a new recommendations? What's changed? Well, there, we have updated the data and the research. So the, the basic recommendations have stayed the same. We still want babies on their backs um, in a crib, which is in the parent's room. Um, we want the crib to be flat and, um, and, and firm and well-fitting. Um, without any any extra bedding, so just the baby in the crib. Um, so those kinds of things are all the same. We still want babies to be breastfed. We don't want them to be around smoke or families who have been drinking or, or things like that. Um, but there are some nuances that have changed. Um, so, for instance, um, we now recognize that couches and sofas and um, cushion chairs, things like that, are very, very dangerous for babies, and we don't want babies to be placed on those services um, to sleep. Um, we also don't want, um, you know, we also recognize that parents sometimes um, may accidentally fall asleep while they're feeding their baby, um, and if we think if you think that's going to happen, then we want you. We would rather you do that in the bed, in your bed, rather than on a couch or sofa or armchair, um, and to remove all the bedding from your bed so that if you do accidentally fall asleep, that it won't be quite as dangerous for your baby. So there's some things like that that we have, um, you know, with increasing and newer data, um, we have updated. So parents are always wondering if your baby, you put your baby on their back to sleep and for every sleep, including naps, but some babies start to roll over earlier than others. Do you keep going in and re-rolling your baby? What do you do? Well, you know, there's rolling over the, and there's rolling over. So if it's if it's the first time that the baby has rolled over and you're not sure that the, yeah, and you know, sometimes the babies will do it and you're not sure that they know how to do it again. Um, so a baby like that, I, I would actually roll them back over. Um, if the baby is really pretty comfortable with rolling back and forth by him or herself, um, it's fine to leave them as they are. Um, I would put them on their back um, to start with, and then if they roll over onto their stomach, it's fine to leave them as they are. But I would make sure that there is nothing else in the crib, um, so no blankets, no soft pillows, no stuffed animals, no bumper pads, um, because we know that if babies roll into soft bedding, then sometimes they get stuck and they can't get out. And you mentioned about if you fall asleep feeding your baby and it's in your bed, and what do you think, Dr. Moon, about co-sleeping and sleeping with your baby in the bed as opposed to maybe just in your room in their own separate sleeping arrangement? We don't recommend that because um, the data have shown that that is a more dangerous um, situation than having the baby in a crib next to the parent's bed. So what we recommend is that a crib or a bassinet or a portable crib be placed right next to the parent's bed, um, and then that way you can have the the um, have the baby close to you, and you can hear the baby, and you can and monitor the baby. You can bring the baby into the bed to feed them, um, but that's going to be the safest place for the baby. And the guidelines are indicating that babies should receive as much breast milk as possible for as long as possible. So does this help re- reduce those sleep-related deaths? Yes, it does. It does. Um, we don't exactly know why. Um, there are a lot of different possibilities, but we do know that babies who um, receive breast milk um, are at lower risk for SIDS. So what else would you like parents to know, things that should be avoided? You've mentioned things in the crib. What about the ambient air or noises or any of these kinds of things? Do they play a role in a child's safe sleep? Um, there have been, there's been one study that's shown that a fan um, in the room 
um, reduces the risk. Um, nobody else has been able to re- reproduce those results. So it's unclear if that... Um, so that's not a consistent finding that we've seen in, in multiple studies. So I would kind of I would take that with a grain of salt. Um, there really aren't any data that I know of in terms of noise level. Um, so um, so I can't really make any recommendations about that. So then, what about pacifiers at nap time and bedtime? Is there any studies or research involving the use of pacifiers? Yes, and actually almost every single study that has looked at pacifiers has shown that um, the pacifiers reduce the risk of SIDS. Um, And it's interesting because um, the risk reduction comes if you fall asleep with a pacifier in your mouth. Um, Even if the pacifier, which we know always happens, even if it falls out as soon as the baby falls asleep, just the fact that it was in the baby's mouth as the baby was falling asleep, um, has a protective effect. And what about products that claim to reduce the risk of SIDS? People look at positioners and wedges and special mattresses, and what do you say about that? What I would say would be none of them have been shown to reduce the risk of SIDS. So if they claim that they do, be wary. That's number one. Number two, if they tell you that you can do something that the safe sleep recommendations tell you not to do. So if they say that you can sleep on your stomach or you can stand upside down or do something like that, um, again, be wary. Um, if it's a product that, um, that meets, the, meets the safety standards um, and, um, and you use the safe, um, safe sleep recommendations, um, then that's fine. And what about tummy time? Does that interfere with safe sleep recommendations? Should we still be giving our babies tummy time? We should definitely be giving our babies tummy time um, when they're awake and and they're being supervised by an adult. Um, They should get tummy time um, starting early, um, do it early, do it often, um, because we know that that helps with upper body um, motor strength. So then wrap it up a bit for us, Dr. Moon, in what you want parents to know and what you tell them every day about the new guidelines from the American Academy of Pediatrics about sleeping, children sleeping, and safe sleeping. Tell them what you want them to know. I want them to know that the baby should be on their backs, um, in a crib, in the parent's room, ideally close to the parent's bed, um, and there should be nothing in the crib. Um, except for a tight-fitting mattress with a tight-fitting sheet on it um, and the baby. So when can, I mean, is there a time that parents can stop worrying about SIDS? Well, SIDS goes, um, the definition of SIDS is up to a year. Um, So technically it goes up to a year, but, you know, 90% of SIDS occurs um, by the time that the baby is six months of age. And the peak period of time is between one and four months. So once the baby gets to be four, five, six months of age, I think you don't have to worry quite as much. Um, the first few months are definitely um, the, the mo- when the baby is most vulnerable. And then um, as the baby becomes a little bit older, um, our concern drops a little bit. But you're not out of the woods yet until the baby is one. And when is it safe for the child to be in their own room where, you know, parents, they have video monitors these days, and of course, monitors have been around a long time. When is it safe to put them in a crib in their own room? I would say definitely not until at least the first few months of life. And what we've said in this um, uh, this iteration is that at least for six months and ideally for a year. And I know that that's difficult for for some families, but um, the first six months are actually pretty critical because, again, this is when the vast majority of SIDS occurs. We know that sleep location is is very critical at this period of time. And and there's something protective about the baby and the parent being in the room together. And we think that it actually changes a little bit how the baby um, sleeps um, because every time they hear the parent move, they'll, they'll wake up a little bit, maybe not fully awake, but they'll arouse a little bit. And we know that, um, you know, what we believe is going on with SIDS is that it's a failure of arousal. So the babies can't wake up. And this is actually why babies who are on their stomachs 
are more likely to die of SIDS because babies who are on their stomachs, they sleep more deeply and they sleep longer, which is why parents and everybody likes their babies to be on their, ba- on their stomach. But that actually is what is probably dangerous about sleeping on the stomach. And the same thing is true for the babies who um, sleep in their, in, in their own, sleep in, in the parent's room, that, that they sleep differently um, and they have these little awakenings and that we think is protective. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's such great information for parents. You're listening to UVA Health Systems Radio. And for more information, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for listening.